In this lecture, we continue our discussion of fraud. We do so by looking at a 1968 Florida case, Vokes versus Arthur Murray, where the court considered whether misrepresenting statements of opinion could qualify as fraud. Vokes was a 51-year-old widow who desired to become an accomplished dancer. She spent over $31,000 and that's in 1968 dollars, over 16 months on dance lessons provided by the defendant, Arthur Murray Incorporated, relying upon the defendant's elaborate assurances that she was dramatically improving and would become an excellent dancer. The complaint alleged that she was a poor dancer in spite of the instruction and that the defendant's encouragements were designed to deceive her and induce her into purchasing additional lessons. Vokes sued to rescind the contracts for all of the lessons paid for, but not completed, and for the return of her $31,000, less the cost of lessons that she had received. The trial court dismissed her complaint for failure to state a cause of action, and the instant court reversed. The central issue is this, may a contract be rescinded for fraud consisting of misrepresenting one's dancing abilities? According to the court, the answer is yes. The court began by noting that generally a contract can only be rescinded for fraud following a misrepresentation of fact. Usually opinions are not sufficiently falsifiable to give rise to a claim of misrepresentation. However, the court recognized that exceptions exist to this general rule and held that the rule does not apply where there is a fiduciary relationship between the parties or where there has been some artifice or trick employed by the representer or where the parties do not in general deal at arm's length or where the representee does not have equal opportunity to become apprised of the truth or falsity of the fact represented. Further, the court noted that a statement of a party having superior knowledge may be regarded as a statement of fact, although it would be considered as opinion if the parties were dealing on equal terms. Applying that principle to the facts at hand, the court said that it could be reasonably supposed that Arthur Murray had, quote, superior knowledge, unquote, about Vokes's dancing ability and potential. And since, quote, it would be a reasonable inference from the undenied averments of the complaint that the flowery eulogiums heaped upon her by defendants as a prelude to her contracting for 1,944 additional hours of instruction preceded as much or more from the urge to ring the cash register as from any honest or realistic appraisal of her dancing prowess or a factual representation of her progress." Unquote. Because of this, the court held that Vokes stated a legitimate claim and was entitled to quote her day in court. Unquote. Throughout the case, the judge takes what some might consider to be a disrespectful tone toward the plaintiff herself, saying, for example, that quote, while she first exulted that she was entering the spring of her life, she finally was awakened to the fact that there was spring neither in her life nor in her feet." Unquote. Vokes ends up winning the right to have her day in court, but she might feel re-victimized by the court's salacious characterization that she, quote, wild away the pleasant hours, sometimes in a private room, absorbing his accomplished sales technique." Unquote. On the other hand, the procedural posture of the case might help explain the court's innuendos. This was an appeal from the trial court's order dismissing the complaint for a failure to state a cause of action. In other words, the trial court held that even assuming all the facts alleged by the plaintiff were true, she wasn't legally entitled to relief. Therefore, the court had to take her allegations as true and ask whether, put in the light most favorable to the plaintiff, they stated an actionable claim. 
According to Section 159 of the Restatement, a misrepresentation is an assertion that is not in accord with the facts. As Vogue shows, a statement of opinion can be a misrepresentation if the parties are in a special relationship of trust or the speaker has superior knowledge in that area. This is captured by Section 169B of the Restatement, which says that the recipient of an opinion is justified in relying on the opinion if he, quote, reasonably believes that as compared with himself, the person whose opinion is asserted has special skill, judgment, or objectivity with respect to the subject matter, unquote. So let's take a look at this quiz. Adam is looking to buy a new car. Beatrice, Adam's neighbor, is trying to convince Adam to buy her old Ford Focus instead of a Honda Civic. She tells Adam, I think my Focus is a great looking car, better looking car than any Honda Civic. Relying on Beatrice's opinion, Adam agrees to purchase the Ford Focus from Beatrice. Later that day, Adam's teenage daughter tells him that the car is ugly. Can Adam rescind the contract based on Beatrice's misrepresentation that her Ford Focus was a great looking car? This is a pretty simple quiz. The answer is probably not. Whether a car is good looking or ugly is a matter of opinion, not fact. Adam would be justified in relying on Beatrice's opinion if her opinion was fraudulent and he reasonably believed that she had some special skill, judgment, or objectivity regarding whether a car is good looking or not, but there's no indication that Beatrice's opinion was fraudulent or that Adam was justified in relying on her opinion. Sam Buell has argued that criminal fraud functions to deter and punish novel wrongful acts that evade narrow legal definition and therefore it must remain it the fraud action must remain adaptive he says quote open textured law that grows and innovates in competition with those who seek to evade it appears to be characteristic of any legal order that seeks to control harmful human behavior at least in any society mature enough to have a large economy Similarly, courts have also interpreted misrepresentation in contract law to cover more than just statements of fact or expressions of opinion. For example, a statement might also be literally true, but contained false implications in context. The classic example of this is the half-truth. In one case, after repeated inquiries by the buyer about an oil storage facility, the seller disclosed the existence of one leak, but not others of which it allegedly knew. The court held that the disclosure of one leak carried with it, quote, some implication of exclusivity, unquote. That is an implication that the seller knew of no other leaks. Courts have also interpreted misrepresentation to include acts of concealment and failures to disclose. Concealment is the covering up of some facts, such as painting over water damage on basement walls or hiding evidence of termite damages, as we're about to discuss in the, uh, one of the very next classes. While concealment is not exactly a falsehood, or at least not an express misrepresentation, courts have held that such acts constitute actionable falsehoods by hearing implicit misrepresentations. Once the court has identified an express or implied representation that is untrue, there are additional elements still required for a contracting party to establish the defense and be able to void a contract. The listener must have justifiably relied on the misrepresentation in deciding to enter into the contract, and the misrepresentation must be either fraudulent or material. The usual effect of wrongful misrepresentation is to render the contract voidable by the deceived party. But courts have identified a kind of fraud in the execution as distinguished from ordinary fraud in the inducement that precludes the formation of any contract at all. 
as an, an example is where a party secures another signature by misrepresenting the character of the document. So let's review. A contract may be rescinded if one party made fraudulent misrepresentations to induce the other party to agree to the contract. Generally, this rule is limited to misrepresentations of fact. However, this may be expanded to other kinds of misrepresentations, such as misrepresentations of professional opinions, as demonstrated by Vokes versus Arthur Murray.